Hi everyone, welcome back. And we are beginning chapter nine here, which is all about exergy. As a cool note, this is the last chapter for thermodynamics one. And when we continue into chapter 10, that'll be thermodynamics two. So be excited, you've almost finished thermo one. So what is exergy? As a note, I did not just spell energy wrong. It is a different thing. And the really unhelpful definition is the work potential of energy. Let's just think about this with an example here, though, and I'll explain it. So if you want to produce power, there's lots of ways we can do this. So first off, I can have those magical heat engines, which we know go from a high temperature to a low temperature. And another way of producing power is you can think of like a turbine, or I'll just use like draw a windmill right here, which has air blowing through it. And when the air goes through it, this guy spins. Now, air doesn't just blow magically. Air is always moving because I have high pressure at one point and low pressure somewhere else. And that's what causes the air to move in that direction. Now, here's my question for you. If I have no change in pressure, so I have no pressure gradient, and if I have no temperature gradient, is it possible for me to produce power? As a note here, I'm also going to say my velocity is equal to zero, and I'm, I'm right on the ground. The answer is no. Like I have no way to produce power if I don't have some sort of gradient. Pressure, temperature, if I don't have a velocity, if I'm not lifted up in the air, there's nothing there to produce work. So if that's the case, let's go back to exergy. So exergy is simply how much of my energy can actually do work. Because no matter what system you're in, as long as you're not at absolute zero, there is energy in that system. Like right here, this air right here, even though it's in equilibrium with the environment, it has energy, okay? My energy in this system right here is not equal to zero. But not all of that energy can go to produce work. In fact, because that system is in equilibrium with its environment, we call it the dead state. None of this energy can go to work, okay? None of it can produce work. And the reason for that is pretty simple to think about if you go back to what we were talking about earlier. I have no temperature gradient because the temperature is the same. I have no pressure gradient because the pressure is the same. And because of that, there is nothing to drive a heat engine, to spin a turbine. It doesn't have velocity, so I can't have it run into something. It doesn't have potential energy, so I can't have it fall. There's nothing in here to move anything else and to produce work. Remember, at its basic, work is just simply a force times a distance. Like, that's what you learned in physics one. If I have nothing to supply that force, which always requires a gradient of some sort, then I am not going to be able to produce any work. So exergy is simply how far am I going away from equilibrium, okay? How far is my temperature from equilibrium? How far is my pressure from equilibrium? How far is my velocity from equilibrium, saying equilibrium being zero? All of that is a measure of my exergy. The farther I go away from equilibrium, the more exergy I have. But even when I'm at equilibrium, even then, while my ability to produce work is zero, my energy is not. So here's a little diagram of that. Like no matter what, your energy doesn't disappear. Like your energy is constant. Conservation energy still applies. And so I have the same amount of energy at the beginning and the end for these little diagrams. We call this one one and this one two. E1 is gonna be equal to E2. But my exergy content is not the same. If I have a process, I can have my exergy go down, my energy stays the same. And even for a specific amount of energy, not all of that energy is available to do work, no matter what, because some of that energy is gonna be left over when I'm in equilibrium, okay? Some of that energy will be left over when I'm in equilibrium. So, 
The energy that matters for you when it comes to exergy is the energy that takes you above equilibrium, takes you above your environment and makes it different because that energy can then be used to power an engine of some sort. Okay, so let's focus in on our environment here and talk about why it matters that we're comparing it to our environment. First off, like I said earlier, you know, if you're in equilibrium with your environment, there is no exergy, which means you can't do work. And so I, I love this picture for just like being pretty. It's a little bit misleading when I'm trying to talk about this, so give me a break there. But our atmosphere contains a massive amount of energy, okay, just massive amount, because the air temperature is around 300 Kelvin. And, my goodness, that's 306, 300 Kelvin. If I'm just using my specific key to about one, that means that per kilogram of air, I have at least 300 kilojoules per kilogram of air. That's a lot of energy. But here's the thing. If all the air is the same temperature, there's no gradient. If all the air is the same pressure, there's no gradient. And so even though I have all this energy in the air, there's nothing to drive a process. There's nothing to cause motion. And because of that, there's nothing that's going to produce work. Now, why is this picture misleading? Well, you can see there's a river, okay? There's a river, the water is flowing. Since it is flowing, that means it has some sort of height gradient, okay? I have delta Z here. It's moving. It's also got kinetic energy because it's moving. And obviously, if there's a wind blowing or something else, that means there's a pressure gradient. But if I have a perfectly still day, and I'm not talking about water or anything, then there is no exergy available. There's nothing to produce work. Okay, so why do I care about environments then? You just told me like there's no exergy there, so why am I focusing on it? Well, here's the reason. A system delivers the maximum possible work when it goes in a reversible process from the initial state to the dead state, which is where your environment's at. What that is simply saying is if I have you know, this much exergy right here, and I go through some process, and at the end, I have turned all of that into work, I have done as much work as I possibly can. None of it was wasted. And that means that's an upper limit for us. We like upper limits. We want to know what our best case scenario is so we can try to achieve it. So this is one of the reasons we call it the useful work potential. I have energy, how much work can I get out of it? And how much work I can get out of it at a maximum, that is my exergy. Like I said, it's an upper limit. And while it's impossible for us to use 100% of our energy to produce work, it is not impossible for us to use 100% of our exergy to do work. We just have to have a very efficient system. Okay. So one question you might be having is, well, is there a case where all of my energy is exergy? And the answer is yes. If we're just talking about kinetic energy or potential energy, then 100% of that is exergy. 100% of that is available to do work. Beyond that though, if you've got pressure or temperature gradients, um, not all of that will be able to do work. But for kinetic energy and potential energy, 100%. Well, that's where we're going to stop this time. Um, and next time we'll go into a little bit more about really defining exergy and how we can calculate it for your system. Thanks for listening. I'll see you all in a bit. Bye-bye.